The Tall Stacks Riverboat Gathering wouldn't have been complete without at least one steamboat race. Appropriately, the Delta Queen took on an old adversary, the Belle of Louisville. And it looks like the Delta Queen has a clear lead. <laughs> this time, the Delta Queen won. But this rivalry is a modern-day tradition. It all started back in 1963. Someone said, let's have a steamboat race to draw attention to the river and these beautiful old paddle wheels. 25 years later, the race with the Belle of Louisville is an institution. It occurs just a few days before the Kentucky Derby and is such a big event that it's carried live on television. There you see your finish, the Belle of Louisville crossing under the Clark Memorial Bridge, the Calliope playing a full head of steam up. The race is over. You can put it in the record books as being run in about an hour and 22 minutes. My very favorite time to be on the Delta Queen is when she's racing against the Belle of Louisville in the spring. That, that one day, to me, is the greatest steamboat day of all days. <laughs> No one knew what to expect during that first race. The Bell had just been bought by Jefferson County in Louisville to be used as a floating park. The Bell challenged the Delta Queen and the race was on. In the beginning, Kentucky Derby officials weren't very enthusiastic. Former U.S. Senator Marlo Cook later was one of the race promoters. And I really did not learn until much later that in the parlance of the old horse better, uh, a fixed race is called a boat race. And uh, so, uh, consequently, the, the, the Churchill Downs people felt that the connotation of having a boat race as part of the Derby Festival Week associated with the Kentucky Derby was just something they wanted no part of. Despite temperatures in the 40s, throngs lined the riverbank. One estimate put a quarter million people along the banks in the cold and damp weather. But for those lucky enough to be on board the Delta Queen, it was the event of a lifetime. I think one of the best times that I really ever had was when uh, we had the first race. Oh, I never screamed and hollered so loud in all my life. <laughs> to look up and to see the people all, all out on the on the banks, and everybody and the, every deck was filled, and everybody was screaming and hollering and blowing horns and whistles and what all. And then the other boats and things, they was a-blowing. Oh, we just had, I just had a ball. I should have paid them for that trip. The whole family went down to the, uh, uh, down to the Delta Queen and, and rode, it, rode it on the, uh, while the race was going on. It was pretty exciting, it was a little scary. We, we had all kinds of uh, problems making sure that the uh, insurance would be in effect during this big steamboat race. I, I think the people who were writing the insurance in Lloyd's in London or wherever it was were, had ideas that the steamboat was going to blow up or something. And here they go, bow to bow, under the Jefferson Memorial Bridge. It was a race for bragging rights, and the Delta Queen won and won big. But that, too, was all in fun. Cheating was part of the legend. Oh, there are no rules. And you don't cheat in a steamboat race. There is no such thing as... I remember uh, uh, Ernie Wagner uh, coming out on, the, on that walkway and, and uh, uh, commenting, oh, and, well, a few vituperative remarks, and, and old Paul Underwood, who used to be on the Delta Queen, by the way, let him know that uh, anything we did was good enough to do to win. And, uh, and whatever it took to win, you know, if we could have had a propeller on the back of the bell, I believe maybe, I doubt they'd have done that. But uh, you just don't cheat in the steamboat race. There's no such thing. From the Delta Queen standpoint, this race meant a new beginning 